to begin um, today's talk, just to introduce and set the stage, uh, a few words on today's topic. Um, collecting accurate statistics are a very important component of repository services, um, not just for the users who entrust their work to our care, um, for sharing and for preservation, but also for repository managers and organizational leaders who want to examine the potential impact and reach of repository materials. So standardized approaches to this, uh, collectively developed, bring us into community with one another around this problem of accurate, consistent metrics. And this information can help us understand who the beneficiaries are of the content we've collected and whether there may be collections we ought to be strategically promoting and focusing efforts on. Today, we will have two speakers describing two important and interesting initiatives that are tackling the effort of establishing standardized metrics for repositories. And I hope you're all looking forward to hearing about these exciting and um, platform independent approaches as I am. Our presenter presenters today are Kenning Arledge at Montana State University and Paul Needham with Cranfield University. So with that, I'm going to hand things over to Kenning. Thank you, Leah. Good morning, everyone. Um, just bring up my presentation. Um, as Leah said, you're going to be seeing uh, two solutions today. Uh, and I'm going to start with RAMP, uh, and then Paul is going to uh, talk about IRIS UK. So RAMP is the Repository Analytics and Metrics Portal. Um, this is part of a grant-funded uh, research project funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Montana State University is the lead institution on the grant, and partners are OCLC Research, the University of New Mexico, and the Association of Research Libraries. So um, here's what uh, I'll be discussing today. Um, we'll start with a, a brief uh, mention of how uh, terminology, basically, um, what, what we're counting. And then I'll talk a little bit about the two main methods of uh, web analytics reporting and the tools associated with them. And that's page tagging and log file analytics. And then we'll talk about RAMP. Uh, we'll also talk about some uh, research data that led up to RAMP, and then the big data analysis potential uh, with RAMP. So before I begin, I'd like to um, give some acknowledgement to the origins of this presentation today. Uh, in November of 2016, Carl and Core uh, had an open national forum called Where Next for Repositories. And among the presentations was one given by Dale Askey uh, called Against Integers, or What Are We Not Doing? And most of you are probably aware Dale is an AUL at McMaster University. And he asked the questions of the audience, how many FTE do you have dedicated bot detection and filtering? Um, and then uh, the, the follow-up question, how many FTE could you commit to this activity? And that was sort of an indication of how much work it really is to uh, deal with robot traffic, non-human traffic that um, visits and, and um, downloads files from institutional repositories. So our reporting model, <clears throat> when we think about institutional repository pages or files that could be counted, we group them into three categories. And the bottom two, ancillary pages and item summary pages, are HTML pages. Um, these are the pages that Google Analytics is very good at counting, um, but we would uh, propose that these are value pages for the purposes of measuring the use of an IR. They're basically navigation pages and search results pages within the IR. The real gold is what we like to refer to as citable content downloads or CCDs, and you'll see that um, you'll see this um, designation uh, throughout the presentation. And these are non-HTML pages, um, mostly PDFs, but it can be also other kinds of files like presentations and Word documents and data sets and so forth. 
And these are the pages that Google Analytics uh, is really bad at counting. And those are what we think are the high value pages. So two basic uh, classes or methods of web analytics reporting. The first is what we refer to as page tagging analysis services and Google Analytics falls into this category. This category relies on a um, page tagging beacon usually in JavaScript that's embedded in every HTML page and when a user views that HTML page it sends a signal back to the page tagging service and is registered as a visit or a view. <clears throat> the other method is log file analysis and um, as you can see from that little pop-up log file analysis is uh, suffers from, from uh, the, the difficulty of filtering out robot traffic. Log file analysis packages are built into some IR um, platforms like DSpace and ePrints. Um, log file analysis is what Iris UK uses. There's another uh, package called PyWIC um, that is becoming popular. Um, so the, if you look at these two methods, basically you have, you have two uh, diametric problems. The page tagging services tend to undercount um, file downloads from IR log file analysis method tends to overcount unless you're really good at filtering out robot traffic. So page tagging method does not track non-HTML um, citable content downloads. So that means that if somebody has gone to Google, uh, Google Scholar and found an article and they click on that link over to the right that, that sends them directly to the PDF, they bypass any kind of um, uh, JavaScript beacon that's embedded on the HTML pages in the IR. They just download the page. Google Analytics never has a chance of uh, measuring that as a download. Same thing if you're in Twitter. Um, if somebody clicks on that link, it's again, it's an external link to the actual file that cannot be counted by Google Analytics or other page tagging methods. So what we have discovered in our research is that most IR activity goes unreported by Google Analytics. And these are, what you're seeing here are four repositories, um, Montana State University, McMaster University, University of New Mexico, and the University of Utah. And we'll talk more about that data in a second. So <clears throat> how widespread is the use of Google Analytics? Well, in another uh, branch of research that we're doing for this grant, uh, which will result in a uh, publication in, in 2018, we looked at a data set comprising 279 libraries that had membership in one or more of the following professional organizations, the Association of Research Libraries, the Digital Library Federation, or the OCLC Research Libraries Partnership. And we found that the Google Analytics tracking code uh, exists in website homepages in 80% of those uh, libraries uh, in the United States, 87% in Canada, and 82% in, in the UK. So Google Analyt Analytics use is very widespread uh, among uh, those, li those academic library websites. So we know that page tagging services like Google Analytics do not track these non-HTML citable content downloads. However, another Google product called Google Search Console does. Um, Google Search Console used to be called Web, uh, Webmaster Tools. Um, and so this is a part of the, it's a, it's a major part of the method that we develop. And it resulted in a publication called Undercounting File Downloads from Institutional Repositories. And the reason we rely on Google Search Console is because Google is the best in the world at robot detection, um, simply because of money. Its revenue model depends on it. 90% of the $75 billion that Google earned in 2015 came from its advertising network. And its advertising network relies on the pay-per-click advertising model. And this means that every time a user clicks on an advertisement, um, the, the company that's advertising 
pays Google five, an average of five cents to $50 for that click. And it can go as high as $900 per click or more. So when they're spending that kind of money, um, advertisers need assurances that humans and not robots are making those clicks. And that's why we're simply leveraging Google's uh, ability um, at filtering out robot traffic. And that's the reason we use Google Search Console. So the challenges to the method that we developed is that we're, because we're relying on, on Google, we're missing non-Google direct links to citable content downloads. So anything that comes directly from Yahoo, Bing, uh, from email, from Facebook, from Twitter, we're not able to count those. However, we know that this is a very small number. Um, most, when an IR is optimized, for Google Scholar, we find that the majority of traffic to that IR is directed from Google Scholar and from other Google properties. Uh, very little of it comes from um, other sources. So it's a limitation, but we think it's a minor limitation. Um, the other limitation to using Google Search Console is that there is a moving 90-day window. Um, so that's in the end, why we developed a ramp so that we would not um, we would not rely solely on Google Search Console and would be able to collect data beyond those 90 days, and the method requires some uh, programming. And again, this is why we developed ramp um, to eliminate that programming for users that want to use uh, for libraries that want to use this method. So here's some more data. Those four repositories that we talked about earlier, um, we looked at a data set in the spring of 2016 for 134 days for each of those four repositories. We found that most IR activity is um, citable content downloads. And again, since if, if a library is just using uh, Google Analytics, we know that they're missing all of this, uh, this traffic. Let's look at some more specific numbers. Um, those first three columns on the left, item summary, page view, ancillary page view, and then the next one, which just totals um, those page views, that's the information that Google Analytics was able to capture for each of those repositories. Now, there is a way to turn on something called download events in Google Analytics. As you can see from the download events column, only two of the repositories that we looked at had this turned on. And that enables Google Analytics to capture file downloads if the event is triggered from within the institutional repository. But it still misses all of those external links. And so the method that we developed that eventually became RAMP um, was able to capture all those additional numbers, uh, download events in that last column. So how many does that equal? Well, you can see here that Google Analytics was able to capture the, the views to the low value item summary pages and ancillary pages in that left column. When events were turned on, it was able to add a little bit of uh, number, but what we were able to capture with Google Search Console was far and away um, more and, and more high value traffic. So it was a 2,000% increase uh, in tracking improvement. So let's look a little bit further, um, just at Montana State University ScholarWorks and only for August 2017. Um, here what we're able to show is that um, if we were just using Google Analytics, we would only have been able to show 33 um, citable content downloads. This is because of the Google events tracking that we had turned on, Google Analytics events tracking. Um, if we were relying on the DSpace logs, we would have seen 2,400 citable content downloads, but this is an inflated number because the DSpace logs don't filter out robot traffic. The method that we developed um, showed 778 citable content downloads from August. And we have now compared this with what Iris UK um, is able to show us, and, and that number is 1,376. So 
the truth, we think, lies somewhere between those last two numbers, somewhere between 778 and 1376. And this is why we advocate using both of these methods together as a complement to see, um, to get a, uh, the most accurate picture possible. So eventually we developed uh, the RAMP web service from this method of using Google Search Console. Web, uh, RAMP is a cloud web service. There's no installation required. There's minimal training and configuration. Um, it takes about 10 minutes to set it up. Um, it provides a consistent method and terminology, and it provides benchmarking data across time and across organizations. And again, because we developed RAMP, that 90-day sliding window in Google Search Console no longer applies. We're able to capture um, all data. So as of October 1, we're tracking about 20 institutional repositories with RAMP, and we're capturing more than 25,000 citable content downloads every day that were previously invisible if a library was just using Google Analytics. <clears throat> um, so this is just a, a sample page from, from uh, from RAMP, so this shows just a bar chart uh, comparing the different institutional repositories and how many citable clicks they are experiencing each day. This is a uh, sample of the data that we collect. As you can see, there is no personally identifiable information uh, because Google doesn't give us that, but the real valuable thing here is that URL, that handle, and that sets us up for a lot more additional um, research that we'll look at in a minute. So the big data analysis potential, um, there are several things that are possible here. One easy and obvious thing is that you can quickly figure out if your IR is experiencing, or is underperforming due to search engine optimization problems. You can see that there are a couple of IRs there that aren't uh, capturing very much traffic at all. Uh, this may be because they just started with RAMP, or it may be a, a more systemic, ongoing problem um, in which SEO has to be addressed. So additional data uh, research that can be done with this data set that we're, that we're collecting um, is a, a data mining. So I pointed out the URL, the handle to each one of the citable uh, content downloads that we're collecting. This means that we can do data mining to collect more metadata about each one of those um, uh, articles or publications that was downloaded. We can then put all this data together and reconcile key entry fields with existing vocabularies, and we can integrate uh, descriptive metadata with the RAMP analytics data. Once we have a data set normalized, um, we can do a lot more. We can start to evaluate the scholarly record across many institutional repositories. We can review the corpus of, of IR content. We can figure out uh, the gaps between what people are looking for and what they're finding. And we can also figure out how visible IR items are in search engine results pages. And ultimately, we may be able to assess uh, some real impact of institutional repositories on the scholarly record. We can figure out how long it takes for articles to become cited and how many citations um, uh, publications in open access IR may sustain as a result of being there. So these are publications that we have produced over the past year. Um, the undercounting file downloads from institutional repositories was the first one. And then the more recent uh, publication specifically about RAMP. And at the bottom is the uh, original grant proposal that was funded in 2014. And this is our research team. And I will turn it back over to Leah. 